Hello everyone, this is Professor Nafis Nassim and welcome to the Principles of Macroeconomics class. Today we are going to welcome you all to this class which is an online class. We're just gonna cover lecture zero today which is basically going to let you know what this class is about. We're going to talk about what my expectations are and what your expectations are. We're going to go over the syllabus. We're going to also see how we can get the book online and finally we are going to talk a little bit about economics in general but it is basically from next week we will start in full speed to talk about or basically in a couple of days to start about um, to talk about the different chapters in um, the book and then go on from there and then you know basically we'll have homeworks and we will have exams but in this lecture you will basically know the syllabus how many homeworks you will have how many midterm exams you will have and all my expectations okay and what you can expect so again this is a, a econ 2301 which is principles of micro macroeconomics this is a hundred percent online class the class begins today which is august 24th and ends on december 10th that is the last day of the class basically we will have an exam on that day uh, then the certification date is september 5th which means i need to know if you are present in this class or not by september 5th and if you want to drop the class, the last day to drop the class is November 12th. So if you are not doing well and you decide that, you know, you're not going to make a good grade in this class, then you, the last day to drop the class is November 12th. As an introduction, my name is uh, Professor Nafis Nassim. Um, th there is a short bio about me I uploaded on eCampus of your um, Richland College and you can go and access to get a background about myself, what I do and what I teach and what I am engaged in. Basically, I finished my master's in finance from the University of Texas at Dallas. I'm also doing my uh, PhD in public policy and economy at UT Dallas. I finished almost all the classes and I'm just left with the research work. I'm also working as a senior financial analyst at Enterprise America Inc. Um, you know, if you're interested in a finance career, you can definitely reach out to me. And at the bottom of the slide, you will see um, my email address is listed there. Any, since this is an online course, this email address is very important. Any questions you have, anytime you send me an email, I will try to respond back to you in 24 hours. Okay, any concerns, any questions, anything related to the class, you can always reach out to me. It's very, especially in an online class, class, it is very too good to keep in touch with the professor. You know, in that way I know you and it helps, and it also helps me to understand if you are understanding the course or not. Okay, so the required course for this class is Macroeconomics, Understanding Our Material World, 4th edition. Um, this is published by Kendall Holt. Kendall Hunt and then the ISBN number is given. The book is available on eCampus or on, on the campus bookstore but at the same time you can download this book um, you, by you know paying and uh, using a code uh, from online and I think uh, during this time that makes more sense and if it is an online class it makes more sense for you to download the book. Okay and I in your email you will see the email that I sent out with this video lecture you will see I attached a instruction sheet where it gives you the instructions on as in how you can download the book from online okay so make and I also uploaded the instructions on eCampus for your uh, simplicity okay but just to give you a brief idea if you follow all my PowerPoint slides if you follow my lecture slides and if you do my homeworks and the examples I did on the video lecture you will be good. You, I think you should be good to get an A in, in this class. But again, the book is very important. It, it gives you additional information. It may help you to understand certain materials better because since this class is not face-to-face, -face, maybe going through the book will help you to understand certain concepts better rather than just looking at the video. But as far as my understanding is, I think if you go over my video lectures, the PowerPoint slides and the homework, you should be good. Uh, and prepared for the exams and the homework. Also, we do not use webcom. My class specifically does not use webcom, but I still attached an, um, a PDF that gives you instruction how you can register for webcom. You know, you can practice um, the quizzes and, uh, you know, the exams after each 
um, uh, homework or after each chapter just to make yourself better but those quizzes and homeworks are not required for this class the, um, for my class those are for your practice purposes and I gave you an instructions in the email in a PDF where you will see how you can um, access the webcom and how you can do the examples so the syllabus is posted on eCampus uh, and I'm going to go over the syllabus right now. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. The syllabus is basically the guidebook. It gives you all the dates, all the exam dates, all the homework assignment and homework due dates, what my expectations are and everything. So I'm going to go over the syllabus right now. So here on the first page, you see this is the principles of macroeconomics class. It has the instructor con contact information, which gives you my contact information and the course information. You know, this is a macroeconomics class, Econ 2301. It's a three credit hours class. We start from August 24 and end on December 10. It's a 100% online class. Um, you know, last day to withdraw is November 12. Then we talk about the book. You know, principles of macroeconomics you can buy it from the campus bookstore or you can access it online again I gave you the instructions on eCampus and in the email so you can easily access this then then there are certain verbiage you know just normal template verbiage you know some responsibilities what are the objectives you will learn from this class and all those things okay and then here in page 3 this is important in, in this class, you will have five homeworks, and each of the homework will be 4% of your total grade. So if you miss one of the homeworks, you will lose 4% of your grade. So it's very important you do the homeworks and submit it on time. So five homeworks and all the five ones together will comprise 20% of your grade. There will be three exams, midterm one, midterm two, and midterm three. Each of these exams will be 25% each. The exams are not cumulative, okay? So so midterm three the final exam or the midterm three is not cumulative so it will not cover the materials that we covered in midterm one and midterm two anything covered after midterm two will be included in midterm three only same way anything covered after midterm one will be covered in midterm two only and these exams will comprise 25 percent each uh, of your grade and then we have a one discussion board that is basically your participation grade this is an online class, so I cannot see if you're attending the class or if you're participating in the class. But this is basically, I will give you a post. I will give you an economic topic, discussion topic. And you basically have to make a comment. You have to give, you answer those questions that I addressed there. And then at the same time, you also have to write two comments um, of your classmates okay so I know you're reading other people's what other people are writing and giving your comments now your comments can, uh, cannot be yes I approve approve it or yes I agree with it or I do not agree with it if it's just a one sentence comment I will not give you any grade I want to be upfront about it and I am telling you right now you have to write at least couple of sentences when you are making a comment to a classmate uh, post okay and again you will see at the very end um, I gave a discussion uh, I gave a detailed explanation of what my expectations are about the discussion board okay then percentages anyone you score 89.5 to 100 is an A 79.5 to 89.49 is B and you know this gives you an idea about where you can be um, in terms of your grade then again all the assignments if I say the assignment is due on August 24th that means it's due at 11:59 p.m. you must submit it online or whatever instructions I give I may ask you to upload the homeworks on a Google Drive or I might ask you to email me something so the deadline if I say August 24th if the time is 11:59 p.m. okay midterm exams will be online on your eCampus I will send out more instructions as in when the exams are come closer you just have to go into eCampus log in and then sit to the exam it's going to be usually two hours exam it will be all multiple choice questions exam but there will be some calculations involved in the exam so you will need a calculator but again it will be all multiple choice questions uh, not, they are not cumulative and when the time of the exams comes I will give you more instructions about it okay then we have the one discussion board as a tool which is five percent of your grade and I gave you all the instructions for what my expectations are you can read this para it's very important and understand what my expectations are okay 
late work if there is the, I do not accept any late work now if there can be unusual circumstances and I expect you to let me know in advance in that case I will accept it but otherwise I don't accept any late um, late um, submissions okay finally on page 7 if you look at it here I have given you week by week plan week by week class plans what we plan to do in the class every week okay like this week we will go we will cover lecture zero go over the syllabus and the class rules next week we are going to cover lecture one then again the week two which is september 7 to september 11 we're going to cover lecture two and lecture three and then homework one will be assigned on that week on monday and it will be due on friday okay so this this table is very important on your page seven which gives your uh, uh, weekly schedule of the class and it will help to keep you on track and then if you look at the next table right below this weekly schedule on page 7 this is also a very important table it gives you your homework assignment dates and due dates so so if I give you homework 1 you know from the syllabus when it is due from homework 2 same thing okay and then it also gives you the time for your midterm 1 when it is when your midterm 1 will be held or where it, when it will be available online when midterm 2 is uh, going to be uh, on available when midterm 3 is available also your discussion board when it is due when you need to finish this discussion board by so if there are any changes i will send out emails with you know notifications that okay the date has changed by uh, one day or two day and we are moving um, the pushing back the date by two days or we're we are cutting down the day by two days but we will try to stick to this table or to the schedule so make sure you look at this if any questions you can always email me again this gives you a information about how you can you know register but I have given you separate instructions that will help you to go over um, how you can download the book and how you can register for webcom okay so that's the syllabus Hopefully it's clear to you guys, very detailed, but gives you all the information that is needed. Okay, class rule again, attendance and participation is very important. If there is any religious holiday, let me know in seven days in advance. So I know if you're missing the class or if you're missing the exam, I know that in advance and I can prepare some uh, management. Don't tell me on the day of the exam or after the exam. Okay, so then we will move on and talk about economics a little bit because uh, this is this class is economics we know it's a principles of macroeconomics class but I will assume that nobody has any knowledge about economics so I will go from there um, all right so let's talk about the next slide you know I today we just wanted to cover a little bit about economics since this is the first class first economics class for most of you I wanted to I will assume that no none of you knew what economics means and so I will give you a brief introduction about the subject matter so basically what economics means is it means uh, the distribution it is basically the study of how we distribute the resources or how we allocate the resources so that is the main thing is economics okay so what are resources we are going to learn about this in chapter two but basically resources are you know it, it can be like steel steel is a resource uh, you know aluminium that's a resource labor you know workers working in a factory that's a resource so there are many types of resources machine machine is a resource right so, but we're going to learn in details more later on, but, but the reality is that these resources, whether you talk about steel, whether you talk about workers who are skilled in, let's say, stitching clothes, or whether you talk about machines, all these resources are limited in quantity, right? They, we don't have infinite number of resources in the world. These resources are limited. On the other hand, we as individuals, our wants are unlimited, right? We pretty much want everything. We want uh, a car, we want a house, we want a, an, we want nice furniture, we want a nice TV. Uh, if we have a car, we want another car. If we have a house, we want another house. Our wants, so in, in, in reality, our wants are infinite, but the resources needed to make that house or the resources needed to make the car those resources are limited in quantity okay so economics is the study that helps to solve this gap between infinite ones 
and finite or limited resources. Um, it is the study that helps us to distribute the resources in such a way so we can make the best choices and that we ultimately get the maximum amount of satisfaction. Okay, so economics formally is basically studies the economic, political and social elements in our system and how in this economic system the resources are allocated. So who gets what? How much I am getting in the economy? How much you are getting in the economy? How much Tom is getting in the economy? So that's what economics is all about. Okay, it is the study of choices, methods and systems used by economies and societies to allocate and distribute scarce resources. So since the resources are scarce, scarce means limited in quantity, we have to make choices, right? We cannot get everything. Let's say we want to eat, we have many different choices, right? Uh, to eat a, for lunch, we can eat Chinese food, we can eat pizza, we can eat or pa pasta, or we can eat a burger right but i only have ten dollars in my hand so i have that limited resource limited capital with me so i can only choose any one of them so i will probably choose the one that will give me the most satisfaction out of pizza pasta chinese food and burger let's say i really like chinese food and i'm craving for chinese food so probably with that ten dollar i will buy chinese food that will give me maximum satisfaction but if that $10 was probably given to you, you would have probably bought pizza because your satisfaction will be maximized if you eat pizza. So that varies from person to person, how they will make the choice. But the ultimate goal of making a choice is to maximize our satisfaction. Okay, so basically this economics, this study of economics will help us to distribute these resources in a very efficient manner, right? In a way so that we can make the best choices, okay? So let's say we, ha again, we have $50 to spend and you have to choose between two meals per day or shoe or an Uber ride or a notepad or a dart pass or a watch. So maybe for me, it is a watch. Maybe for you, it is a pen because you're starting the class. Maybe for uh, Rick, it's shoe, because he probably uh, plays a lot of sports, so he needs shoe. So different people will use the resources in different way, but they will try to use it in the best possible way so that it maximizes their own satisfaction. And economics, when we study economics, it helps us to make that correct choice. It helps us to make the choice that is best for us, that is, that will maximize our satisfaction. Okay, so different individuals will have different choices, as I said, to allocate the resources and this will give them, that will give them maximum satisfaction. Now, in economics, this satisfaction is also known as utility, okay? So the ultimate goal for everyone is to make the choice that will give the maximum satisfaction or in economic terms, the maximum utility okay so that is what economics main objective is if you allocate your resources in such a way so you can make the best possible choices which will give you the maximum satisfaction or utility now this applies say the same thing applies for groups or economies you know when we are talking about the city as a whole when we are talking about the state as a whole how we are going to allocate the resources in the state of texas what is good for the state of texas and what are the choices that we need to make in the state of texas to so that we experience growth so these are all categorized under the study of economics okay so spe specifically economics is the study of the choices methods and systems used by economies and societies to allocate scarce or limited resources in the best possible way and the ultimate goal is to maximize utility so economics basically helps us to make educated choices improve our choices and use different methods to allocate the resources now economics can be divided into two areas okay one is called the microeconomics and one is called the macroeconomics now this class is all about macroeconomics okay there's another class which you probably will have to take and i also teach that class it's called the microeconomics okay so macroeconomics is basically the study of the overall allocation of resources within a society it is basically at a group level, okay? When the resources are allocated at the group level, then we are talking about macroeconomics. 
Um, it, so if we are talking about the U.S. economy, you know, how, if, how are we allocating resources for the U.S. economy or how are we allocating the resources for the Texas economy? Or how are we allocating resources for Dallas economy? So if we are talking about the country level, if we are talking about the state level, or if we are talking about the city level, these are examples of macroeconomics, okay? It looks at the scenario at the aggregate level, at the group level. Some of the macroeconomic terms that we're going to learn in this class are, you know, economic growth, inflation, unemployment, government expenditure, total investment. So these are all items that are categorized under microeconomics and these are items that are related at the aggregate level you know to groups now the other type of study is called the microeconomics basically it's the study of how you allocate the resources from from a smaller perspective from an individual perspective okay how you will allocate the resources as a consumer so when we go to walmart how are we going to make the choices? How are we going to allocate our resources? So as an individualist, as a consumer basis, or how you will make a choice as a business. Let's say you have a auto dealership business, or let's say you have a car business. How are you going to allocate resources so that will maximize your utility and you will be able to make the maximum profit? So those that those type of things are classified under microeconomics. So these microeconomics is for smaller units. It's for you know, individuals or, you know, individual businesses, okay? Whereas macroeconomics is all about groups, economy, state economy, city uh, or county levels. These are macroeconomics. Okay, now both branches of economy seeks to measure and analyze economic efficiency. So economic efficiency, what, what does that mean? Is when we are able to maximize our satisfaction then we have economic efficiency okay so when we make a choice that maximizes our satisfaction that will cause economic efficiency and we are going to learn about this later um, in our uh, next chapters but right now just you know the main focus is to maximize satisfaction which in turn will give us economic efficiency okay uh, so economists or social scientists use critical reasoning to measure the achievement of economic efficiency. Economic efficiency is achieved or maximized when most utility is obtained for most people. So just what I said, from the macro perspective, let's say in a city, if the utility is maximized for most of the people of the city, then economic efficiency is achieved. Okay, so maximizing the utility or satisfaction will create economic efficiency. So therefore, economists analyze the different types of choices, methods, and systems, and finds out the combination of choices that will produce the maximum utility for most people, which in turn will lead to economic efficiency. Basically, this last line summarizes everything with what we just said, you know, in, in, a, in one single sentence. So that's that's all I just I don't want to overwhelm you today because this is your first class I just wanted to give you a brief introduction of what economics is and what are the two branches of economics macroeconomics and microeconomics relate to you know what are scarce resources you know um, and why we want to make choices because resources are scarce and our ultimate goal is to maximize utility and if that happens we have economic efficiency that's that's the just the gist of what I just talked about today. So in our next lecture, we will start from uh, talk, talking about in details about chapter one and and go on from there. But this is just the beginning. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Other than that, you will hear back from me soon again. Uh, you guys have a good day. Thank you.